Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Willis, and welcome back to You Will Love AP Economics. Thanks for joining me for another video on the topics of Unit 1 in the AP Microeconomics course curriculum. Today's video covers Topic 1.2, Resource Allocation and Economic Systems. If you're taking notes for your AP class or prepping for the AP exam, remember to click on the link below and download the free guided notebook page to make it easier to follow along. Let's get right to it. In this video, our goal is to define how resource allocation is influenced by the economic system adopted by society. Because scarcity exists, consumers, firms, and governments must make choices about how to carefully allocate and use scarce resources to meet as many needs and wants as possible. If done carelessly, scarce resources could be wasted and needs could go unmet. Collectively, all economic participants strive to efficiently answer three essential economic questions at the heart of every economy. What goods and services should be produced? How should they be produced? And for whom should they be produced? The way a country answers these three questions depends on its values, like efficiency, equality, freedom, and security, and determines which type of economic system it uses. There are three major types of economic systems, free market economies, command economies, and mixed economies. At first glance, economic systems may sound abstract, but they impact your daily life in big ways. For instance, why is healthcare free in some countries, but insanely expensive in others? Why do some governments control prices, while others let companies charge whatever the market allows? Why are public goods like clean air or national defense handled by governments instead of private businesses? These are all questions of economic systems, and by the end of this video, you'll understand how to identify each type of system and recognize how they function in the real world. First up is the free market economy, also known as capitalism or laissez-faire economics. In this system, individual consumers and businesses in the private sector control resources, and decisions are made based on self-interest, supply and demand, and the profit motive. The economy is guided by the invisible hand, a metaphor for how individual self-interest in a competitive market tends to promote the good of society overall. The question of what to produce is answered by consumers, who signal a demand for certain products that maximize their utility, and by firms, who then produce the goods and services that consumers need and want the most in order to maximize profits. The question of how to produce is answered by firms and businesses, who act to satisfy their profit motive by producing products at minimal cost. Firms will naturally want to avoid waste and invest in innovative and productive means of production to minimize costs and maximize revenue, leading to profit maximization. The question of for whom to produce is answered by the markets themselves, where product price and availability dictates who is willing and able to buy products. Through supply and demand, market price and quantity can fluctuate, meaning consumers may not be able to afford products or may not be able to find them when they're needed. Ultimately, the invisible hand of market forces dictates who is able to buy goods and services. The free market is efficient, innovative, and responsive to consumer demands, but it doesn't guarantee that everyone's basic needs will be met, and it can result in income inequality, market failures, and economic instability. Next is the command economy, also known as a centrally planned economy. In this system, the government owns all the resources and makes all the decisions. This includes what will be produced, how it will be produced, and who will get it. Think of North Korea or the former Soviet Union. In these economies, decisions are made with the goal of achieving economic equality and promoting the general welfare. The government might decide to produce a thousand tractors, regardless of whether people need them, and set quotas to ensure production targets are met. The advantages of this system include the ability to quickly redirect resources and provide basic services for free. However, there are serious downsides, such as a lack of incentive for innovation or hard work, wasted resources due to bureaucracy, and shortages of consumer goods because planners can't always predict what people actually want. Finally, we have the mixed economy, which is what most modern nations, including the United States, actually use. A mixed economy combines elements of the free market economic system with the government intervention of the command economy to correct market failures, promote equality, and ensure the public good. In this system, businesses still make most production decisions, but the government steps in on behalf of the public to correct failures in the free market, like regulating wasteful industries, providing public goods, and redistributing income through taxes to reduce income inequality. Think about public schools, roads, social security, or the way the government helped distribute COVID-19 vaccines. These are examples of how the public sector works alongside the private sector in a mixed economy. Mixed economies help fix problems like allocative and productive inefficiency. Allocative inefficiency is where free markets underproduce vital goods, like vaccines, national defense, police services, and transportation. Productive inefficiency is where private industries use resources in wasteful ways, like when private health insurers drive up costs with administrative red tape. In theory, a mixed economy aims to capture the best of both systems, market-driven efficiency and government-guaranteed equity, though balancing the two is always a political and economic challenge. And that's everything you need to know about resource allocation and economic systems. You can click here for additional videos for AP Macroeconomics and AP Microeconomics. And be sure to check out my videos on AP U.S. Government as well. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more content on AP Economics and Government.
Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time on You Will Love AP Econ.